Oh, one second. There we are. I'm on the set of a brand new movie. It's called The Bride of the Reanimator. It's a sequel to one of the most successful low-budget horror movies of recent years. A film that took an old 1930s pulp story and made it one of the fastest and funniest living dead movies ever. The director's name was Stuart Gordon. The film was Herbert West, Reanimator. <laughs> I met up with Stuart Gordon in one of his favourite spots in Los Angeles, the prehistoric La Brea Tar Pits. Among the life-size models of ancient mammals, I asked him how the film had started. Someone said, well, have you ever read Herbert West Reanimator? And I'd never heard of it. And I went to the library, and it turned out that the book had been out of print for years. I mean, I think since, since it was originally, you know, published in the 20s. And I had to put in a request for it, you know, and uh, it was in our special collections. And six months later, I got a postcard saying that I could come to the library and read it there, but I wouldn't be allowed to take it out of the library. And I got there, and they gave me this book, and it was like uh, uh, pulp, an old pulp book. And the pages were literally crumbling in my hands, you know, as I was turning the pages. And so I said, I better Xerox this thing. And that's, that's how I found the story. <laughs> How much did you actually raise for the movie? Was it, was it a big budget? It was um, under a million. I think it ended up being about $800,000. Which is a tiny amount. It is. Uh, when it was, the whole movie was, was shot in 22 days. We all want to retain our personalities in some idyllic afterlife. We all pray for some miracle, some drug, potion, pill. Perhaps, though, it takes something else. Perhaps it takes desire, an obsessive desire. Perhaps it takes... We will discuss the location of the will in the brain structure at another time. Mr. West, I suggest you get yourself a pen. Class dismissed. How can you teach such drivel? These people are here to learn, and you're closing their minds before they even have a chance. What are you here for, Mr. West? You know, you should have stolen more of Gruber's ideas than at least you'd have ideas. Mr. West! How did you come to cast Jeffrey Combs in that role? Well, he walked in, and it was he was Herbert West. I mean, he really was. It was funny, because in Lovecraft's story, West is described as having blonde hair and blue eyes and being very clean-cut looking. And Jeffrey doesn't really look like that at all, although he does have this kind of sort of, I don't know, childlike quality that's, that I think is similar to Lovecraft's West. Uh, but uh, he had that um, incredible intensity. You spend most of the films in a kind of state of a mad intensity. How do you get yourself into that, that state of being? That's all I do. <laughs> the thing about West that you, you get from Lovecraft's story, and I, and I tried to get in the movie, is that this is a guy who only wants to do one thing. His entire life is, is, is dedicated to bringing the dead back to life. And conquering death, I guess, is what you'd say, which is a wonderful dream. You know, it's one of those things that doctors have been trying to do forever. And there are doctors I found out that are actually working on, you know, serums very similar to Herbert West, uh, you know, in real life. We can defeat death. We can achieve every doctor's dream. You'll be famous and live lifetimes. You haven't done this on people. I've done all I can here. I'll need new lab space. You will help me. How would you describe the character you play in the Reanimator films? Obsessed. Totally obsessed, linear, no diversion from his appointed goal in life, which is the highest goal that anyone should, should attain, which is the creation of life, or the recreation of life. Do you agree that he's dead now? Do you agree that he's dead now? West, no! He's just got the blinders on. 
doesn't see anything except his goal, which is, I think, for a lot of people that, that, that see this movie, uh, uh, I think that they probably appreciate that, whether they want to admit it or not. There is something admirable about someone who will not stop. In the brain? Of course. Don't expect it to tango. It has a broken back. God. Why does it make that noise? Hmm. Birth is always painful. It was dead. Twice. I spent a lot of time in the uh, morgues of America, you know, doing the research on this movie. And uh, I've discovered that the way that death is portrayed in film is, has nothing to do with, there's no basis in reality whatsoever. You know, they always make the people look gray and they put dark circles under their eyes and maybe some blood in their mouths and that's it, you know. But uh, I, I got a chance to, to meet uh, some pathologists who were all too happy to have someone to talk to because no one ever visits them down in the morgue. And uh, they showed me all of the, the they took me on a tour that I'll never forget. We failed. Come on, let's go. Someone's going to be coming any minute. He failed. Not I. Mr. Kane, Mr. Daniel Kane, please report to the security desk level L. Oh, God. Cover him up. Let's go. Medically, let's go. That what they were doing was they were trying to um, kind of jumpstart a person's brain. I guess is what you'd say. And it was like uh, sort of the equivalent of adrenaline that they were giving these, these uh, corpses. So I wanted to depart from you know, the Romero approach to have the zombies be like speed freaks, you know, that they were completely charged up. They'd just gotten like this voltage shot through them, which is why I would tell the actors that were playing the zombies, they pretended you would just gotten, you know, stuck your finger in a light socket. And, uh, you know, that all of your nerves are just firing and you just can't stop moving. And uh, it, was, it was good. It worked out real well. Perhaps the most enduring and endearing image of the film is the corpseless head of Dr. Hill, the former lecturer with whom West has argued. West now makes the foolish mistake of bringing it back to life. Yes. Parts. I've never done whole parts. The head was either stuck up through a, a tabletop and the appliances on, on the performer or through a wall or draped in black and the sets which were lit brilliantly by Mac Alberg so that you could make all these little things hidden to the eye. And of course we worked very, very closely with Stuart, who, whose vision it really was, who um, worked out all of these little things in great detail. There wasn't a visual effect, uh, post-production visual effect in the entire movie. Yes, Doctor. It's Herbert West. What are you thinking? How do you feel? You? I think Reanimator is probably one of the best horror films in the last five years. Um, I wouldn't classify it purely as horror. It's, it has a lot of dark absurdity in it. The, Stewart has, has a very fine grasp of, of what is uh, disturbing to look at. And he has a great ability to milk those disturbing moments. It's, it's almost like a huge absurdist comedy with very, very black humor 